All right, so I guess I'll just start off quickly. Are you are you 100% all right with being recorded? Yeah, that's fine. All right, and are you all right with me uploading this to YouTube after? Yeah, not a problem. All right, probably won't be up today, but maybe in a couple days because I'll edit it and put some visuals in. That's fine. All right, so I guess we'll start off with the first question. So there has been a little bit of debate, not much, but there are some people that are curious as to whether or not your real name is Zach Waters, or if that's just an alias of yours, and maybe your name is something else. <laughs> no, my name is actually Zach Waters. Um, Zachary with an I as well, which is quite strange. I think my parents were going through a little sort of biblical phase and wanted to name me after someone in the Bible, and they looked at Zachariah and went, oh, no, nah, that's probably a bit too classic. So they went with Zachary with an I, which is quite left of center for them gotta keep it creative yeah gotta keep it creative it all starts from the, it all starts from the get-go all right so the next question i have for you how long have you been producing for and i guess you could go into years or months or whatever um i've been producing since early 2011 um and so that what that, that makes that like seven years now so yeah it's been a it's been a long time and i remember like being on my computer and like a friend of mine put ableton on my computer he had a spare code or something and um i was like this is actual witchcraft like i don't understand any of this and i didn't know what a vst was until like 2012 2013 i didn't know that you could like, get sample packs so for so long i was trying to make music off like just the Ableton stock plugins and stock like yeah the stock sounds so it wasn't uh, I was I shot myself in the foot so it was like a revolution for but, you once you discovered those oh finding finding VSTs and sample packs is like yeah finding the holy grail it was the best thing ever so speaking of DAWs and VSTs what's the main programs you use and any main plugins that you use for your production um I'm a big fan of Ableton and I feel like that um, interface really uh, makes a lot of sense to me anyway. Um, there's a lot of guys out there that use FL and have no problems with it, but for me it just doesn't really make too much logical sense. Uh, I like being able to see all of my stuff and I like all of the channels uh, correlating to that specific sound rather than like a just separate window being linked to that. Um, and I guess like VST wise, I don't really go too far out of like the serum silent uh, like little bubble, but Spire sometimes, I like to use that for my sub sounds. Um, I'm not sure why, but it, it gives this really warm sort of texture to them without it being too overcomplicated. I think serum especially gets very detailed. Um, so. For sub bases, I don't really bother opening it because I just know that it's um, going to fry my brain if I if I start working on one sound, I'll just keep going, going, going until I get something completely different than what I'm after. <laughs> um, and I think I use a lot of um, T-Rex stereo limiter. Uh, I pretty much put that on my master every time. It's a quick tip for anyone out there, just to get a really solid sort of limiter is uh t-rex yeah I'd, I'd highly recommend that all right so i've got two questions for you when it comes to your soundcloud the first being that um when i looked back i saw you used to make a lot of like electro and psytrance and then eventually you moved yeah. on to your techno and um house-ish tracks will we see a return of those genres um i haven't really planned a return of doing psy trance or anything like that i think that i i don't feel there's any more creative space to be made with, within that genre anyway i think that there's so many really good producers doing it at the moment that i i can't necessarily contribute to that scene in a like a pioneering perspective like i i always look at a track and go am i challenging myself and am i challenging others to to sort of one up it, and I think that in Psytrance I can't do that because there's so many good guys doing it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll come and revisit it. Um, but 
yeah, for the for the time being, that electro stuff and that sidetrain stuff will probably take a miss. Sounds good. And then my second question was, you said you started producing in 2011, but your oldest track is only four years old. So did you used to go under another alias or did you just never upload those tracks before? <laughs> I ended up deleting a whole list of tracks from my SoundCloud a couple of months ago just to sort of keep things a bit more, um, a bit more like concise. I think um, show your best. Stuff. I had a lot of stuff up. Yeah, I wasn't really happy with some of the stuff looking back, so I just went, you know what? I'll just chuck all those on on private one day when I'm bored. I can just go through and have a listen to all my old failures of songs, <laughs> which I'm sure many. Do they look back and five years ago they go oh crap that's what I was like makes sense so yeah. if we can't expect any side trance or um, electro what can we expect from you any labels that you look on reaching out to or any specific genres or you're gonna keep on I'm with what pretty you're doing? I, yeah I'm pretty content with um, with the monster cat and they're really supportive of sort of how diverse I want to be um, which I absolutely loved and they really embrace a lot of creative people so it's a really nice sort of family to be a part of so label wise I'm I don't think I'm going anywhere um, but if there's if there's one thing that I probably will do it's um, sort of consolidate my sound into a lot more darker stuff I think that dark stuff really comes naturally to me and uh, I think while Bonsi Cat can harbor a lot of those songs There'll be a couple of um, sort of songs that wouldn't fit their sort of criteria or their their catalog. So maybe I'll shop around for another label for those ones. But um, yeah, for the time being, anything dark. And if it's hard enough and uncaged enough, then I think I'll just send it off to Monster Cat. So should we expect anything on Instinct or nah? Um, not under this project anyway. Ooh. I'll just say that. Yeah, I'll say that. Alrighty. So aside from the whole Zach Waters name debate, there's also a lot of people that ask about you and Bad Computer and how you guys are friends. Yeah. So, um, well, I was well, going to ask number one. Sort of, oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Uh, well, we sort of, we haven't actually met before. We just pretty much talk to each other every day because he's like, he's an Aussie as well and uh, we share same taste and humor, so I think we've got a lot to sort of relate to. And back when I was making music when I was 19, which is exactly his age now, I was sort of in the same position as what he is, like coming up, so I can really um, sort of relate to what, what he's going through, and I think that really helps us connect as friends. And then the other main question, can we expect a collab ever? Yeah, you can. It's coming, but very slowly. Oh! It'll, yeah, you heard it here first. Well, not really first, but you, you definitely heard it here. Yeah. Really exciting. And then my last question for you, what would you say is the best part of being a producer? Uh, the hours. It's gotta be the hours. You sort of, you can wake up and do whatever you want, but at the end of the day, you get to choose whenever you wanna work. And yeah, being your own boss is pretty cool build your own schedule yeah pretty much it doesn't it doesn't always work too well but i suppose if you have deadlines then it's fine <laughs> just make the track overnight <laughs> yeah exactly exactly oh if your track's late you can just leave it to the last minute and do it at 3 a.m and it's all sweet all right so i asked a couple of my viewers if they had any questions and i selected out i would say the best questions so yep. the first question that i have for you um, how did you develop your style and what inspires you? Would that include, and that includes like people, any genres or cultural influences? Um, uh, I still don't think that I have a particular style, um, but I think my sound comes down to mixing and mastering all my own things and having my own sort of influence on that aspect. Um, there's, there's a lot of sort of sounds and drums that I would usually stick to if I was choosing samples and all that sort of thing. And I think that that taste also has an influence on, on the sound, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I have a particular 
style all throughout my songs um if you listen to like a bad computer track you can tell straight away that it's a bad computer song just from how everything's processed and everything's mastered and it's all so precise and that you can definitely tell that it's him but i i think that my style is a lot more relaxed and i don't really pay too much attention to um that aspect um but my my main influences definitely come from uh, guys like Gasafelstein, uh, Drezzo, uh, Rez, and just basically anybody who's pushing the pushing the boundaries to dance music and electronic music in general. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of sort of dark influence as well, like Pink Floyd um, for psychedelic aspects. So. I don't know if anybody out there knows who they are. They're Probably a pretty big people. band. Probably a couple of people. Um, yeah, they they really experimented a lot with delay and reverb, and I put a lot of that in my songs. So I think I can credit them to that sort of aspect of it. And um, yeah, that pretty much concludes my list of heroes out there that really helped me sort of find my style. Plan on meeting them one day. I would love to meet Salstein. He's like, he's like a ghost. I swear he doesn't exist anymore. He's just like making movies and stuff. I don't know what he's doing, but I would, I would love to meet that guy. All right. So next one. What's your favorite Pokemon? Favorite Pokemon. I I saw this question before, and I really had to have a hard think because. I never really watched Pokemon, like I did because a lot of my friends had like Nintendos and played Pokemon all the time. Um, but I would have to say Ghastly just because he probably looks the best. This one kept you up at night, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, did. it actually did. I was like, damn, which one am I going to choose? It's like, do I choose like all the originals or do I choose like the recent ones? Like what's going on? But yeah, I, I thought I'd just settle on, so settle you're on just one that I the originals. Used to Those like, ones are like yeah. the safe ones. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, next question. Where do you see you and your production leading you, whether it be in the near future or in the far future? Um, well, near future is about development for me. I think I really want to develop and hone in my style um, to something a bit more brandable, a bit more concise, um, something that makes more contextual sense in the whole catalog rather than it just being like a lot of different varying songs um which is cool but i don't think um uh, many people can sort of relate to that i guess not the majority anyway so i think from a business perspective doing that um makes a lot more sense and also long term i would love to eventually get over to north america and europe um i'm planning on coming to vancouver next winter and doing a little ski trip and staying for a couple of weeks and chilling out with the monster cat guys so um i'm definitely going to sort that out and hopefully pick up an agency in the states and do some work over there and play some shows that ski trip will we get a zach waters vlog 100 percent. i've wanted to ski in canada for so long so this is a this is a tick off the bucket list for sure. I'm gonna keep my eye out for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll see me failing. So it's all sweet. Pineapples on pizza, yes or no? Definitely yes. I don't know why anybody thinks otherwise, but pineapple on pizza is the fucking best thing ever. Oof! Get ready for a bunch of people to fight you. I'm sure, I'm sure Mike Darlington can agree with me on that one. Oh boy. So if you're against pineapple on pizza, you're against Monster Cat. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what I'm. That is exactly what we're saying. <laughs> so, in relation to your track, a lot like you, I got a couple of questions, but I tried to uh, spit this into one. Um, how did you get, come to the decision to put a section of pure sine waves? Uh, so that was actually by accident. I was. Um, I was building out up, up to this big, like, super saw sort of, um, like, like a resolution, I guess you could call it. Like, it just all builds up to this massive super saw break. But I accidentally soloed the sine wave track when I was um, experimenting with the sounds. And I was like, oh my god, that was actually really, really good. 
and I remembered hearing um, there's a track uh, called Stuck in Sarcoletta and it's on Anjuna Beats but it does the same sort of thing with the sine waves um, and I went damn I would really love to reference that to um, to put in a song and I think it really sort of worked I'm I'm yeah pretty happy with how it went it's really cool and then the second question in relation to the tr uh, track a lot like you was how did you go about making such a such a thick and full sub bass and bass so the sub bass I use serum I mean I'm spire why do they all sound like why do they all start with this um, so there was spire and then uh, that was so that was the sub underneath the kick and the kick I just got from some sample pack somewhere. Um, but yeah, the sub bass was just a sign from um, Spire that I used a bit of sort of distortion and harmonics to actually bring out the mid range so that you can hear it a little bit. I mean, on a, on a laptop or on sort of bad headphones or something like that, it's a little harder to hear. So I added the second bass, which is from Serum, which is a growlier one. Mm -hmm. And that just adds uh, like a, not a human element, but something a bit more audible for um, the palette. So it's not as, it's not as subby and it's not as sort of boring, I guess you could say. So that sort of develops from the start of that drop to the end of it. And it gets sort of growlier and growlier and lets the rest of the track progress. All right. Back to the funny question, what's your favorite shampoo and do you have a certain scent that helps you produce certain genres? Um, oh, favorite shampoo? Can't go past a bit of Pantene, I reckon. Uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily have a scent, but if I could make a suggestion to all the producers out there, try producing with incense in your room because it smells amazing and it really helps you relax when you're making music. Good tip. Do you think storytelling yeah. is becoming more prominent in production? I guess whether that be in a single track or maybe in EPs and LPs when people have like a sort of theme to go about. Uh, I would like to say yes, but I honestly think that um, I see more and more people sort of, or more and more producers really trying to make music for the masses. And I think for the most part, uh, a lot of people don't necessarily mind about the sort of story behind it and it's more so for the hardcore followers that really like to dig. Um, I mean, if you look at uh, Bad Computer's new stuff, there's there's a story to every song, there's, there's little codes in his artwork that suggest um, next songs and like other different little aspects and he's actually writing a story to his to match the music which i think is a lot more interesting and it provides more context to what people are actually listening to and i would love to see more and more artists go down that route like they used to do like um old rock albums and stuff all used to have context so we're never really like okay how many sheep can we get to buy this it was more so like okay how are we going to tell our story in in the medium of music so i would really like to see that come back but I'm sort of skeptical on how that will come back. I think if I'm not mistaken, in Bad Computer's album uh, arts, the code is in Python. That's what I've heard. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah, somebody's somebody's translated it um, on Reddit, and they did a really good job because it's pretty much word word for word. <laughs> so favorite songs and genres, and I guess we'll also put in favorite artists you might have, and that does not include yourself. Um, I listen to a lot of hardcore, um, so sort of post-hardcore and all that sort of screamo stuff, if you want to call it. Um, I guess before before I started getting into dance music, like in 2011, I was listening to a lot of that. So I guess your heroes like Parkway Drive and um, all those guys, uh, All Smiles, I think they're from um, the States as well. Um, and what else have I got for you? Um, I listen to a lot of Gustafelstein. Um, I think Pursuit's one of my favorite songs of all time, just given how how cool it was for the time. I hadn't heard anything like that. 
um, and uh, it surely paved the way for a lot of a lot of electronic acts now. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of guys from Australia as well, like Tamu Parlo. I really really get around, but uh, they're they're like a sort of Pink Floyd hybrid, I guess you'd call it. They're pretty reverby and mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really really enjoy sort of chilling out and listening to them. But I think the number one genre that I'm into at the moment is neurofunk for sure. Bad Computer got me onto it and just listening to the quality of the production, I feel like that's that's like an end game for any producer wanting to make like the perfect sub basses, the perfect distortion, like all of that stuff is absolutely mental. I wouldn't even know where to start with a neurofunk track and the kings of that are definitely noisier. So. I listen to a lot of Noisia and trying to reference their mix and masters is an absolute nightmare because you feel like you're never going to get there as long as you live. I guess just to quickly reference, can we expect some uh, hardcore screamo in Neurofunk eventually? <laughs> <laughs> I actually wanted to put a hardcore vocal in uh, a new song that I'm working on with Drezzo um, cool. because I, I put a track in um from bring me the horizon and uh it's can you feel my heart and the vocal was the same key as the track that i'm working on and um yeah when i listened to it i was like oh my god that's actually really really cool so i really want to get a hardcore vocalist to sing on it i wouldn't mind ollie sykes singing on it but i think he might be unavailable it's gonna be pretty hype yeah hopefully Hopefully. So we're down to the Hopefully. last two questions. Yeah. First one being, when can we expect you to rebrand to Zach Fires? <laughs> uh, well, Facebook actually denied my um, my name, so I can't change it anymore. Uh, they they thought it wasn't my legitimate name, which is true, but Oof. still, shame on them. Shame on them. So no, not anywhere in the near future. Sackfires might make an alias, <laughs> but maybe actually, it might take the pick. I actually changed my name on Facebook, and then when I tried to change it back, it wouldn't take my name. It's it like, wouldn't let you. Well then. Really? Yeah. Well, stuck with this name now. Oh well. And then the last question, it's in relation to your Discord profile picture that I was just a bit curious. Are you still looking to buy a girlfriend? Oh yes, buying GF, 100k grand exchange, PM me. <laughs> All right, well, that's it. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to for this interview. No worries, man. I had a blast. <laughs>